Now we've considered bank terms before, but when we were considering it before, we were considering the easier case where there was no friction. Now we've learned how to deal with the friction. So let's consider bank turns again and we'll go and work out what's the maximum speed that a car can follow around a track if there is friction involved. Okay, so this example question is what is the maximum speed a car of mass M can transverse a bank turn with a radius of curvature R at without moving up the inclined plane? The turn is banked at an angle theta. The coefficients of friction are mu s and mu k. Okay, so the best way to start this is by drawing a diagram. So let's draw our banked turn. And here's the car. And now we'll draw the forces acting on the car. So we've got our weight force acting downwards. So that's mg. Then we've got our normal force in like that and we what we've got the frictional force and we don't want the car moving up the plane so we can assume it's moving up the plane and the frictional force is opposing that so the frictional force is here now what we're going to want to do because this is a bank turn question is split the forces into components which are vertical and horizontal and we do that because we know that the resultant force is a horizontal force back towards the center of the radius of curvature so let's start by splitting this normal force up we can split it up this way and if this angle in here is theta then this angle here will be theta. One of the reasons we know that is that the angle here will be 90 minus theta, and then the angle between the normal and the plane is 90 degrees, so this angle here must be theta. Okay, so if that's theta, then this one here is equal to n cos theta, and this horizontal part is n sine theta. And similarly with the frictional force, we can split it up into a component which is horizontal and vertical. And if this is theta down here, then we can see that that angle there is going to be theta. Just these are alternate angles on parallel lines. And so this will be the frictional force times cos theta. And vertically, we've got the frictional force times sine theta. Okay, so we're going to start with the vertical components. Now the car is not moving up or down vertically, so we know that the, these forces must sum to zero. So the forces up, we've got the n cos theta. That's our only force up, and then we've got the frictional force and the weight force. So minus the frictional force times sine theta minus mg and that is equal to zero and now the frictional force is just equal to in this case it's a car so the wheels are rolling so we've got static friction times the normal force and so we've got substituting this into the equation above we've got n cos theta minus mu s n sine theta is equal to mg and so we can rearrange this we can pull n out as a common factor and then we've got cos theta minus mu s sine theta and that's equal to mg so we can come up with an expression for the normal force the normal force is equal to mg over cos theta minus mu s sine theta Okay, now we need to consider what's happening horizontally. Now, horizontally, there is an acceleration because it's undergoing centripetal acceleration. So the resultant force is mv squared on r towards the center of the turn i.e. left in this case. So the resultant is going in this direction, purple.
Okay, so let's scroll up a little bit. Okay, so we can say mv squared on r, that's the resultant. Now we've got the frictional force, the horizontal component of that acting inwards, and the horizontal component of the normal force is also acting inwards. And so the frictional force, that's just mu s n cos theta plus n sine theta. Okay, let's pull n out as a common factor. Now what we can do is we can substitute in the expression we derive for the normal force from up here in here for this n. So we have mv squared on r is equal to mg over cos theta minus mu s sine theta times mu s cos theta plus sine theta. Now we've got an m on both sides, so they'll cancel out. And so we end up with v. And so we end up with v squared is equal to rg mu s cos theta plus sine theta over cos theta minus mu s sine theta. So to find v, we just have that v is equal to the square root of this expression here. So hopefully that made some sense to you. The trick here was to break all the forces into their components in the vertical and horizontal direction. And the reason we're using that trick is that the resultant force from the circular motion is in the horizontal direction.